Good morning, folks. It's been a while since we did a video. Um, today, I'm going to do a very detailed polishing and staining video um, on a project. So I'm going to show you what we're doing today. You can see what we have. Here's our generator uh, that we need to run our equipment. Here's our trailer and our truck, just to give you an idea of how much room we need to set up here. I'll take you in. I'm going to show you this project. So this is the room we're gonna do here. Um, I forget the actual dimensions. It's, I don't know, 25 by 22, something like that. But you can see the joints in the floor here. We're going to fill these joints with a polyurea joint filler. Um, color is actually brevity brown that we're going to be filling. And then we're going to grind and polish this floor to a 1500 grit diamond stained saddle brown. Um, so I'm going to show you every, every step along the way so you see what goes into this. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Okay, so we're getting ready to fill these joints. Uh, but what we need to do is take a saw and recut them because there's dust inside of those joints. It's very hard to see. But if we fill them now, the joint filler is not going to stick. So here's our saw. I'm getting ready to change the blade out to get the right width to cut these. So I'll show you how we do that. All right, so we have the, the right blade on the saw. We're getting ready to cut these joints. And in the meantime, Jeff is changing out the diamonds. So these diamonds fit on plates. And uh, you can see it. you knock them off, they pop off, and then you put new ones on. Um, we are gonna be putting a 40 grit diamond on. That's the underside of the, the grinder with the three plates. One thing I typically don't show is how we hook up the generator and get our power to our equipment. This is 480 volt three phase equipment, so it requires that generator in order to run it. So what I do is, in this case here, we're closed, so we're just gonna run the cord out. I have this generator set up. I put a uh, plug in the back so we can just plug into it. Here's our, our plug. So that's how we hook up power. Here's our vacuum system, which we have adapted to a three inch and a two inch port. This is actually a five inch port there. We're going to connect our vacuum system to our saw and we're just going to start with the joints to get that going. All right, so now Jeff is putting the other plates on here. You can see these plates, they go on. They lock on to, uh, it's like a triangular uh, adapter on the bottom and then they twist lock on there. So now we're set with the right diamonds. There's a set of plates that was the other diamonds. What I want to show is what you need to have in your inventory here when you're doing these. These diamonds obviously are very expensive but now here we have some of the diamonds that we carry with us. We normally have, well we have 25 grit on another shelf but we have the 40 grit diamonds the 80s, the 150s. We need 40, 80, and 150 grit diamonds of every series there is. This is for extremely hard, then uh, very hard, medium hard to hard, soft to medium, and then we have a uh, uh, soft and very soft bond which are in the front in another compartment. So we have a bunch of diamonds that we have to carry with us. 
So that's our, our diamond part. And we'll get back inside here. Just about ready to start cutting these joints open, and then I'll show you how we fill them. Okay, so now we're all set up. We have our uh, joint cleanout saw. We're gonna cut these joints open, like I said. We have our diamonds mounted on the grinder, so we're ready to grind. I'm gonna take you out. I'll start the generator. You see what we deal with here. So we're gonna walk out. Flip that. There's about a uh, 15 second delay or something with that. And then uh, we're gonna get set up here. So I'm gonna put this on time lapse just so you can see how this, this goes here. Okay, we ran the saw down the joints, we cleaned the joints out, and really it was just that construction dust. After they cut this, there's, there's dust inside the joints that the material won't stick to. So it's important that you saw cut them open to clean out that, that uh, remaining dust. So we've done that, now we're gonna fill this joint with a polyurea joint filler. Um, and this material comes in a, a dual cartridge, um, and it mixes in the tip here. So part A and B come out, they mix coming through this tip, and it goes into the joint. So we have a gun. We're gonna put this in our gun. Purge the air out. And now we're ready to start. I always purge one of these bags here. And we purge it out. I'm gonna go right into the joint, and I'm just gonna, in this chair, by the way, this is like you sit in the chair and you just roll back on so, See, we're filling and overfilling this joint. It's important that you overfill it. Now I might have to go back to a couple spots there. I see that I'm probably a little low. And this gun makes this real easy. Although this doesn't look like a lot of joint, to pump a uh, dual cartridge gun like this takes a lot of energy, let's put it that way.
All right, while that material's drying, I'm gonna mix up the stain. So we're using uh, Ameripolish Sherlock. This is Saddle Brown um, stain. So uh, this is fairly simple to mix. We mix it with acetone. You can mix it with, uh, I believe it's denatured alcohol. We just prefer acetone. It seems to penetrate better. Um, and if you're gonna stain it, you surely want it to last. So just pour your container of stain and the gallon of acetone. Then uh, we have a, uh, this is a Ameripolish Penetrating Agent Plus. What this does, ex it extends the dwell time of the, the stain. When you spray this on the floor, it literally dries in like five seconds. So this extends the time so it dries in like, say 20 seconds, so it can penetrate farther. So you add about, well, one to four ounces per gallon. I'm putting two ounces in. So I'm just gonna pour that right in there. And that's our mix. I'm gonna shake that really good before we use it. I just want that to soak in there for a little bit. So that's the stain. Um, I have two gallons. I'm not mixing the second one until I know we need it because it's gonna be kind of close. All right, while we're waiting for these jewels to dry, when you diamond grind, it's important that you keep the diamonds cool so we have to add water to the grinder sometimes. And this kind of thing looks really hard. So we're just gonna pour some water in the tank. Okay, so we let this stuff sit about 15 or 20 minutes. The joint material looks full at this point, so what we're going to do is we use a scraper. It almost has like a razor edge on it, and we're going to shave these smooth. So I'm just going to start in the center here and work my way out just to show you what it looks like. And you get into it, and you shave it all over. Okay, the joints are done. We're hooking up our uh, vacuum system and power to the grinder. So as soon as we're set up here, we're going to start grinding. I'm going to put this on time lapse again. Actually, the 
first couple metal box rides are going to be about the same speed. They're normally pretty slow. So I'll put this back on time lapse. Alright, so I'm almost done edging. I just wanted to stop and show. Uh, Jeff got done with the grinder now uh, with the 40 grit diamonds. We just put the 80 grit diamonds on. We're going to get set to do that and we always run the next set of diamonds perpendicular to the first so we don't get a pattern in the floor. I'm still doing the edging. I'm almost done with uh, this little one here. Then we're going to keep going with the 80 grit diamond. Okay, so the edges are done. And you can see definitely a difference between the hand grinder and that grinder. That grinder weighs a thousand pounds, the hand grinder is like 10. So uh, as we run our additional passes, this edge is gonna blend in. So Jeff's getting ready to start the 80 grit diamond now. We just need to uh, check the dust in our vacuum. And we'll keep going.
So we're just going to keep doing that until we get up to 1,500 grand. Alright, so we just got done with the 150 grit metal bond diamonds. That's what's on these plates. These are really hot from the friction, but see right there, this is 150. These are the 150 metals. Now we put, this is a 50 grit diamond impregnated pad. So this is an extra step we're going to do today um, just to run into some of the valleys that there might be in this. This concrete is exceptionally hard. Just want to make sure we have as many defects out as possible. These little swirls that you see, they're not scratches. These are just like, um, I don't know, uh, marks, trails that the, uh, the diamonds leave on the floor just from the friction. Probably burn marks, really. So we're going to run the, uh, these pads and uh, then we're going to do the 100 grit resin bond pucks after that. the 100 grit pucks that we ran right now. Jeff is taking those off. We're going to be putting the 200 grit pucks on. We're going to make another pucks on with that. Then we have the edge. Then the 400 and stain. Right, we just finished up with the edging. Now we have the 400 grit pads on here now. We're going to run those 400 grit pads. We're going to put the stain down and then 800, 1500 guard burn.
Okay, so here we go. Now this is the 400 grit grind. I'm showing you the reflection, just so you can kind of see the, the reflectivity. We're getting ready to apply stain now. So this is our pressurized stain sprayer. Um, I'm going to detail the edges by hand by the door, by that door, so I don't overspray anything. They're putting trim in here, which is gonna be four inches up. So uh, you're probably gonna have some overspray around the walls, uh, but I'm gonna start putting the stain down and you'll see how I do that. I do it in a very random pattern intentionally um, so you get a modeled look to the floor when we're done. Okay, so now all the stain is down. This is Saddle Brown with Brevity Brown Joint Filler. So now I have a sprayer full of Densifier, which is a hardener that we're gonna spray on the surface next. This is now the stained floor. We sprayed Densifier on it after the stain. So now we're gonna run an 800 grit pad on top of this. Then we're gonna put a clear penetrating guard on it and then we're going to burnish it. All right, so now we're done with the 800 grit grind. You can see the shine in the floor behind me here. So now all we're gonna do is put the guard on it and then we're gonna burnish it. That will give it a real high shine. It's also gonna make this color darker. When you put stain down, it's funny how the color changes multiple times throughout the process until you're done. But it's gonna be much darker when we're done. All right, so now we're gonna put down the clear guard. I'm gonna do this in live video just a little bit to show you how the color changes on this stain. Um, so we're just going to do this corner and I'm going to put this on time lapse in the back there again. So I'm just going to wet this mop up. We put this down approximately 2,000 square feet per gallon and that's all dictated on how um, hard, soft, dense, or porous the concrete is. So we're just going to wet the mop up there. Let me set the corner there. And all I do is spray this down here. And it's important when we put this down, put it in a random pattern. But look at how that color comes out of that now when you mop that. So that is going to be close to what it's going to look like after we burnish it. Uh, the camera's in the way. I'm just going to put this on time lapse in the back so you can see the rest. All right, so now we're done putting the guard down. Now you can see this is even a little shinier, but when we burnish this, this is really gonna pop. This is gonna be like a, a glass floor. So our burnisher is right here, and I have, it's a sticky mat right there. So when we roll it in, it cleans the wheels off as we roll onto the floor so we don't track dirt all over the floor. So uh, Jeff's gonna video me for a little bit and then probably put this on time-lapse while I burnish it. And then you'll see the finished product in a minute.
Okay, so we just finished up. You see that reflection now. I actually see the sky there. It's quite a reflection on the floor. She wanted a mottled saddle brown look. Quite a reflection. There's her burnisher. So this is the finished product. I think it turned out really, really nice. I've wanted to do one of these polishing videos for a long time, but it takes so much time during the day for me to do the video. It's kind of hard for me to get the video and the polishing done in one day. This one happened to work out, but you saw from start to finish, everything involved in a nine step grind, 1500 grit finish, uh, stain. Um, so there's a lot that goes into it. So uh, for those of you who, who are looking to get this done, at least now you kind of know what to expect all the work that goes into it. So thanks for watching. See you on the next one.